Hi, I'm Jason Gorber, and we're here to look at the Studio F2 speaker. Now, this is a brand that's new to me, Studio. They're come out of Sweden. Um, the stories about Phil Collins taking the court in Sue Studio uh, didn't actually happen. Uh, that's just a terrible joke. But what's not a terrible joke is the speaker. It's actually pretty fantastic. It may look diminutive in size, but it actually packs quite a punch. Um, comes in a very simple packaging. Um, they promise to be all um, environmentally conscious with an all paper packaging. And it's interesting, we have a bunch of plastic and a bunch of battery stuff here. Um, but nonetheless, I guess every little bit helps. Um, uh, as they uh, declare, small speaker, big sound, and it's actually quite great. The reason that I'm here, like beside a lake, is because, you know, it's it's sort of cottagey time. And this, I thought, was a perfect place to actually bring a little speaker like this. And I've actually been extremely impressed about what we're getting, um, not bugging the neighbors too much, but, you know, I'm providing a little bit of a soundtrack to the indoor space so I don't have to hear those damn balloons going on all the time. Um, key features, as I promise, is broadcast function. Okay, what's ridiculous is you could go, instead of having two studios, you could have a hundred of these connected to one another as some sort of massive, I don't know, rave. I don't think anyone's going to do that, but the fact that you can actually do multi-speaker with this is actually quite interesting. Um, water resistance IPX7. It allowed me to basically dunk it here. Um, you're not going to use it underwater, but um, the fact of the matter is that it is set so that the unit itself is actually protected inside the little rubber flap. But other than that, even the way that the drivers work, all that stuff is all very, very much um, uh, conducive to being used outdoors as much as it is indoors. Up to 15 hours of playtime. I mean, one of the nice things that you get with devices um, is that they actually come mostly charged. And I used this for hours and hours and hours and hours before um, it finally ran out of the battery, just out of the box. But the fact that um, it charges reasonably quickly with USB-C and gives you 15 hours of uh, playtime is actually quite great. And what else do they promise? An auxiliary 35 millimeter input. This is great. So the fact of the matter is that with, uh, yes, most, most, most people are going to use this as a Bluetooth speaker, um, uh, wirelessly uh, transmitted from your device, totally fine. But the fact that they also include behind this little flap, a mini jack in, opens up the world of possibilities. I mean, as ridiculous as it is, you could have a turntable in this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, that this is the best way of showcasing what your vinyl sounds like. But nonetheless, the fact that you can plug anything into here, going back decades, just shows as a funny way, a future proofing of this device. God forbid everything else decades from now um, runs into trouble in terms of um, um, uh, Bluetooth reception, stuff like that, you still have analog in, which I really love. Um, the actual speaker itself is very dense, durable, but you know, it's it's not insubstantive, but it's certainly light enough for you to slap. It has this cute little rubber thing, a uh, little handle that you can actually um, kick around. Um, on the front panel grill, you have uh, the speaker, and on the back you actually have this driver um, uh, transducer. What um, essentially the base uh, in, in, in a rubber gasket, and when it's there, sort of uh, kicking around, um, it actually generates quite a bit of bass. I, I put it on like sort of a little chair right beside me, and it was vibrating the chair. It was great. I actually put on some particularly obnoxious tracks. Um, I think uh, track three from Paul's Boutique, which has this really low, almost six hertz uh, uh, bass uh, on, on, on the track, and I actually got it to move sort of across the table. So yeah, certainly enough um, in terms of uh, bass for such a little tight package, um, really excellent. And on the top are a series of um, inlaid uh, buttons. Uh, you have uh, you have the, uh, the connect button to connect to other devices. You have obviously power on and off. You have volume up, volume down and play. And if you double click on the um, plus and the minus, that obviously does uh, track selection if you're playing off your mobile device. Now the challenge with it is I found that there's a little bit of delay. You never really knew if you hit it enough. Play and pause uh, worked pretty well, but the volume switch was a little bit pernickety. Also, you never know whether or not this is at max volume, whether your device is at max volume, there's no feedback on this. So, no, you know, you don't necessarily need it for speakers like this, and that's certainly not unique about this one. Um, but it's just one of those things that you've, you're, you're, 
you're always second guessing about whether you did the right thing, whether the volume's actually up or the volume's actually going down, if there's a cycle delay and stuff like that. But I gotta say, sound wise, it packs a punch, as they say. Um, obviously, very much treble and bass. It's not a lot of mid range in here, um, but it does a better job for. Uh, you know, testing um, general mid-range things, things like French horns, um, male vocals, that sort of stuff. But if you get something that's sort of mixed with um, with a lot of treble and a lot of bass, electronic music obviously has um, a ton of that, but also certain pop music is very much emphasizing the opposite sides of the spectrum, that you get a lot of boom and you get a lot of br uh, brightness. Um, this does the trick. But what I really love with speakers like this, as crazy as it is, is I love listening to mono stuff. I dig out stuff from the 50s. Because it's a single speaker. Um, um, it's it's old school way of listening. You don't actually have the phantom center, you just have a center. You just have the single speaker. So even listening to stuff like, I don't know, Bob Dylan on acoustic guitar um, in mono, actually did the trick uh, with this. So it's the F2. It's, it's, a, it's a cute little package. It's from a, a, um, a company that certainly seems to emphasize not only the aesthetics, but also um, the functionality. Um, does the trick, does what you want from a Bluetooth speaker, and why not sort of bring it to your dock and uh, listen to some tunes, and as I said, bug your neighbors. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if you had a chance to listen to this or other uh, any other questions you have, any other Bluetooth speakers you may recommend, and uh, we will see you next video. All the best. Thanks so much.